we know the critical coagulation concentration, or CCC, is the concentration of electrolyte needed to rapidly coagulate a dispersion of a given uh, Hamaker con constant and surface potential. So in this example, we have some nanobeads dispersed in water. We're given the temperature. We're given the Hamaker constant for those beads when they're separated by water as a solvent. And uh, we're given the size of the beads. OK, so the first thing we have to ask ourselves when we have a question like this is, what is, what are, what is the question asking? So the question says, calculate the concentration needed to re induce rapid coagulation. So um, we're asking for the concentration of salt. And we need to know actually what the charge of the salt is. So let's put a little asterisk on here and say that we're asking for the, con the question would actually have to specify this, which electrolyte we're going to use. And we'll say that we're going to use sodium chloride as our electrolyte. So how much sodium chloride we have to mix into this dispersion to screen the electrostatic repulsion between the bees such that they would be able to stick to each other and coagulate. Okay, so if we wanted to destabilize this colloid, how much salt would we need? All right, so this is asking what is the CCC? So as soon as you see wording like this, you know that the question is what is the critical coagulation concentration? Great, let's write down the equation for that. And uh, remember that we don't have to use the full equation. We just have to determine whether or not we have the low potential case or the high potential case, and we can jump to a shortened version of the equation. So we have to ask ourselves, is it the low or high potential case? So really, we're looking at here is the value of ZE phenot over 4KT. So remember, this is a measure of electrostatic energy at the surface versus um, random thermal motion. Okay, And we want to see how does that compare to 1. Is it a lot less than 1 or a lot more than 1? So we have the surface potential. The charge on the sodium or chloride is they're both 1, so that's 1. That's a charge on an electron. So if we plug all that in uh, and the uh, Boltzmann uh, constant and the temperature, we end up with 0 0.097. So that's obviously much less than one. So this is the low potential case. So as soon as we know that, we can jump into the shortened version of the equation. And we said that this was going to be a low potential case, 400 is KT. Our dielectrics, the surface potential to the fourth divided by z squared, e squared, and the Hamaker constant squared. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in those numbers. Okay, so we've got 1.38, 10 to the negative 23rd joules per Kelvin. Our temperature was given at room temperature, so we'll just put 298 Kelvin, typical 25 degree temperature. And then we have to Oh, and this set of dielectrics is supposed to be to the third, so make a note of that. Okay, so we've got a set of dielectrics to the third. Let's write them down. First of all, we have the relative uh, dielectric constant for water, and at room temperature, that's 78.5. So we want to look that up for whatever material it is that is the solvent in our dispersion. Most often it's going to be water, but it could be something else. Uh, we also need to have the permittivity of free space, or the vacuum permittivity, so 8.85 and negative 12 coulomb squared per joule meter. All those are to the third. And we have our surface potential, which we said was uh, 10 millivolts. So we'll just convert that to SI units, 0 0.010 volts. That's to the fourth. And then we have the charge on our salt. And the, remember, we derived this only for symmetric electrolytes. So the cation and anion are both going to have the same charge. In this case, it's a charge of 1. We have the charge on the electro, uh, electron charge, 1.6, 10, negative 19 coulombs. And we've got the Hamaker constant as well. We need to square that. That is 5 times 10, negative 20 joules. Okay, 
And uh, as an exercise, you should go through and cancel all the units, and you'll see that this comes out to units of reciprocal meters cubed. And in fact, it comes out to 8.6, 10 to the 22, 1 over meters cubed. Remember that this is a number density, so this is how many formula units of sodium chloride per meter cubed of dispersion. And normally we like to put concentrations in terms of molarity, so let's convert this. Because this isn't very intuitive. Is this a very high concentration or very low? It's not used to dealing with these units. Let's put it in sort of regular units. So we know molarity is moles per liter, so we're going to get rid of meters cubed. We want to have liters, and we know that there's a thousand liters in one meter cubed, so we got rid of that. We also need not the number of formula units, but the number of moles of formula units per liter. So we know we've got 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units for every one mole. So that allows us to cancel the units we don't want, which are meters cubed, and gives us the unit we do want, moles per liter. And when we punch those numbers in, we end up with 1.4 times 10 to the negative 4 moles per liter, or we could say, you know, molarity. And you just get rid of this exponent by calling this millimolar. So this would be 0.14 millimolar is the concentration of sodium chloride that would induce rapid coagulation of this particular dispersion. And so we can see that's not a very high concentration. That's, that's, that's not that high at all. And so uh, by increasing the concentration of salt, we can, uh, we can induce the coagulation, the rapid coagulation of our dispersion.